Now we're going to approximate a definite integral using a left sum rectangle method and a right sum rectangle method. So remember that the Riemann sum definition of the definite integral, which is here, was this limit as n went to infinity starting with x sub 0 which was the a and ending up with x sub n minus 1 which is the um, interval boundary right before you get to b then this was the right rectangle sum and if those limits existed and were equal to each other then that's what was defined as the definite integral. So we're just going to, you should have uh, learned that in Calculus 1. So we're just going to go over these numerical methods for approximating definite integrals and we're going to start with the left rectangle sum which comes from the Riemann sum. But if we just want to use left 2, what does that mean? Left 2 means use n equals 2 sub intervals and use a left sum rectangle method. Well we figure out that the delta x that we should be using is your b minus a over n that's from calculus 1 and that's 5 minus 1 over 2 because there's 2 sub intervals and that's equal to 2. So left 2 is f at 1 and that is because here's your 1 right here and the left rectangle method says for your sub interval here's your sub interval from 1 to 3 because remember delta x is equal to 2 in this case you use the left boundary and f compute the f of x value there the f of x value there is 4 over 1 because the function is 4 over x. 4 over 1. And then for your next rectangle area, you use the left boundary of your sub interval. There's your sub interval from 3 to 5. Use your left boundary f of x value, which is f of 3. So that's where these two come from and you multiply by delta x and delta x get the area of those rectangles. Then we use a trick of the trade. You factor out the delta x because that's constant and you just compute in this case f of 1 plus f of 3 which is this times delta x which happens to be 2 and you end up with 32 thirds or approximately 10.67 the true value of the integral is this which comes out to be 6.43775 so it's pretty far off so it's pretty far off but we only used two sub intervals and notice that our areas are way over they're an overestimate and that's just because the curve happens to be decreasing monotonic so of course your left boundary is going to give you a higher rectangle height in every case so in this case this left sum happens to be an over estimate and in, as you can see it's way over because there's a lot more area covered in these rectangles than there is under the curve and that's the way it came out 10.67 is a lot larger than the true value. Okay, now we move on to right method with two sub intervals. So right two means use n equals two sub intervals and use the right sum uh, rectangle method. So again, the computation of delta x gives you the two and then your right method says use the 
right endpoint of your sub integral. Here's your sub integral, your first one, but you use the right f of x value, so f of 3 you use. f of 3 times your delta x plus you go to the right endpoint of the next sub integral, which happens to be 5, and do the f of x value there, which is f of 5, and that will give you the right rectangle sum. So f of 3 plus f of 5 with the delta x factored out, and the function of course is 4 over x, so 4 over 3 plus 4 over 5, and that all computes to 64 fifteenths, which is approximately 4.27, and you compare that to the true value of the integral, which is 6.438 approximately, and our right rectangle sum value for two subintervals is lower than the true, and look at the rectangles here, of course they look under. So this is an underestimate, and it just so happens that this curve is monotonic decreasing so when that happens your right rectangle sum will be under now if the curve fluctuates from increasing to decreasing then your rectangle sum can end up uh, being either under or over all right again there's a big difference between the two values and that is because we only use two rectangles and you can see there's a lot of missing area here. So you can always run the program to check it. Run the integral program, put the 4 over x in, run it from 1 to 5, two steps, n equals 2, and it gives you the uh, values there. But you should know how to do this by hand too for a exam. Uh, just for your information, left 8, this time the delta x is 1 half. Look how many um, left sum rectangles we have. We're still an overestimate. It's still over. Each one is over because the curve happens to be decreasing. So that your left sum, your left endpoints, f of x's, and the resulting rectangles that come from those are all over estimates. And on the right side, right 8, again delta x is 1 half, right 8 comes out to be 5.716 as compared to the true. So that's an underestimate as you can see. And of course these are under because the curve happens to be decreasing monotonic so that of course the right endpoints of each subinterval give you an underestimate in every case. But as you can see, we don't have too much er area growing on still. We still uh, we have error, but it's getting a little bit better. The values are getting a little bit closer. And then we jump up to a hundred subintervals and you can see that the left is closing and still over. You can see right here when you look zoom in on that that your rectangle still is over. So your left sum is a higher than your true. And here these values are getting pretty close but as you can see if you zoom in here the right endpoints give you f of x values heights that create rectangles that are under the curve. So it should be an underestimate which it is. And then if you go all the way to the limit of this particular uh, uh, applet that I found on the internet, left 5,000, 5,000 subintervals, a delta x of 0 0.0008 gives you a value on the left rectangles, still a little bit over, but very close. And the right sum is very similar.